Well, my name is Wendy Neal, and I am a SharePoint consultant for McGladry in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And prior to that, I worked for nine years at Great America Financial Services in Cedar Rapids and started with SharePoint in 2007 um, on the 2007 version and just we brought it into the company and just kind of fell in love with it and has have been using it ever since and very passionate about SharePoint ever since. So is that the Great America, like with the big roller coaster ride? <laughs> I should have known you would ask that. No, not the Great America with the roller coaster rides. It's uh, they were a started out as a leasing company back in the early '90s and have ventured into other financial services as well, not just leasing. Okay. So our real discussion here is around community. Can you give me like the uh, the high level overview? How did you get started in the SharePoint community? Well, I didn't get started until fairly recently. As I said before, I had started with SharePoint in 2007 and really didn't even know there was a community out there at that time. I mean, I had been on the internet and I'd seen some of the blogs and and there were some people, you know, I knew who you were, I knew Mark Anderson, I, I knew, you know, Dan Holm, I knew, I knew his blog. I, so whenever I had any issues or, or uh, challenges with SharePoint, I would go out on the Internet and search for blogs and, and find some really good information. But I really didn't understand the magnitude of the, the actual community, um, you know, the camaraderie of it, the the for lack of a better word, community of, of people that were connected. Um, so it was about 2011, um, I got in touch with Carrie Abraham, another local uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa SharePoint person, and we kind of got together and started a small lunch group of other SharePoint people in the city that we had found on LinkedIn. So there was probably about seven or eight of us, You know, not really enough to start a user group, but we just started a regular lunch group and got together, you know, every couple months, every two, three months or so, and just had lunch and just talked about SharePoint. Um, and so that's really uh, my first involvement with other people and, and getting together and actually discussing SharePoint. How hard was that to set up? It wasn't. I mean, Carrie is the one that had the desire to get in touch with other local people. I think she felt kind of isolated. She had, as you know, she had quite a following on endusersharepoint.com, but she didn't know anybody locally. Mm -hmm. And so she really wanted to reach out. So she found me on LinkedIn and, and a few others and just invited us to lunch. And we just got together and, and one day and just started talking. The reason I ask, Wendy, is a lot of people have asked me, you know, how do I start a, an event? Is it hard to do? What's the logistics? It sounds like a lunch meeting is a pretty easy way to go. It's super easy. You just send out an invite and, and everybody shows up. You know, if, if there's not enough people to start a user group or do anything formal like that, just to get together and have lunch or, or get together and have a beer after work or, or something like that. It's, it's that easy, Great. literally. The other thing that keeps popping up with all these interviews is the the value of providing content, or as Mark says, provide something value to the community. Give us some of your feedback on how you started doing that, because it, it was an important part of your growth. Yeah, it was around, it was late 2011, around the time that that our lunch group started meeting and, and Carrie had kept saying, you know, you need to start writing or start a blog. So I finally started a blog, but it really, when I started it, it was meant to be just kind of a knowledge base to myself mm -hmm. because as I had said, I'd been working in SharePoint for several years to that point and had figured out a lot of things and, and solved a lot of issues. And so I thought I'm going to just start documenting some of this stuff for me so I can go back and refer to it. And then if it happens to help anybody else, then that's great. But I really didn't have any aspirations or um, any goals with my blog as far as, you know, content or followers or anything like that. It just, it just sort of happened. And I think it was about that time, shortly after I started my blog, um, you contacted me and I'm not sure if you saw my blog or if you just saw me posting comments on endusersharepoint.com, but I remember plain as day, you sent me a, a Twitter direct message and it said, why aren't you writing for me? 
<laughs> those, were the, <laughs> those were the exact words. Why aren't you writing for me? And I think I replied back in something like, well, I could be. You know, what do I need to do? So you set me up with an account, and I just started cross-posting some of my blog posts on end user SharePoint. And I think that's when it really took off for me, when I really got a lot of exposure and, and kind of well-known at that point. You know, it's interesting, Wendy, that it's not just end user SharePoint we're talking about here, right? You're writing for CMS Wire now. You're writing for other community sites. I, I need to know um, how valuable you have found that you can spread your message by participating in external sites. Oh, it, it's absolutely huge. And like you said, CMS Wire, they actually contacted me as well. And and it was just going to be one article, and they, you know, they had some theme going on, and I don't remember what it was, something about mobile. And so, yeah, sure, I can write an article for you. Mm -hmm. And then it turned into a monthly series or, or a monthly article. So it, it's been huge. You know, they've got a, a huge following. And then, you know, I write also sometimes for the new uh, collaboration site, uh, SharePointCommunity.net, right. and that's. That's been kind of a surprise. It, it literally uh, started as just a few people getting together, um, wanting to promote each other's blogs via a, a listly list, and it just turned into this huge community of uh, out of nowhere. It, it's just crazy, um, but that that's just the awesome part of it. How it just ballooned into something huge, and it just started out as a list of like 25 bloggers. I think is what it started out as. One of the interesting things for me about this community is I think literally we all met online. We didn't know each other. And so then that that online community started to bleed into the real world as we started meeting each other at conferences. Right, yes. Um, and it's funny you mentioned that the first um, conference that I ever went to was the SharePoint conference in 2011. And I don't think I met you at that conference. I think it was the I think it was at SP TechCon where we actually met in person. But uh, you know, when I went to the SharePoint conference, it was really funny because I, I did meet a lot of people that I had only known online. Actually, the the very first person I met was Dave Coleman, and he was funny. He's clear over across the pond in Europe, right. but he's the first SharePoint pro that I that I met in person besides besides Carrie, who is local, um, but I consider him to be the first real SharePoint professional, you know, that I had, that I had met. And so, and then I met a lot of others um, through him, he introduced me to a lot of people. And, and so, yeah, it's really awesome to get together at conferences and, and meet the people that you converse with online. So how did that work into you becoming a speaker on the circuit? It sounds like there's, there's this process that I'm finding that First, you provide content, then you go to events and start meeting people, and that works its way into becoming part of the speaker circuit. Yeah, I think people expect you to speak. Like I said, that first conference I went to, you know, I had just just gotten involved in the SharePoint community. I'd just gotten a Twitter account, and evidently I must have been tweeting a lot about SharePoint and SPC 11. So by the time I got to the conference, I, I think I was almost kind of well-known, and, and more than one person came up to me and said, so what session are you doing? Mm -hmm. Which session are you speaking at? And I said, what? This is the first conference I've ever attended. You know, so, and, I, and I got that as I attended more you know, conferences and SharePoint Saturdays, it almost became expected of me to start speaking. And so I thought, well, what the heck? You know, I'll try it once. If I bomb, it, I, you know, I bomb. I don't have to do it again. And, and it actually went fairly well. And I just, you know, kind of went from there, just kind of kept speaking at different SharePoint Saturdays and conferences after that. So your first one was what, Twin Cities with Carrie? You guys did a co-presentation? Uh, co yeah, that one was fun. Um, we we really had a blast with that. I did two sessions at that one. So that was my first SharePoint Saturday. And I think I submitted like three sessions hoping that one would get selected. And I got two selected. So I was like, oh boy, now I have to prepare two presentations. <laughs> but thankfully the one was, was um, you know, a, a co-presentation with my friend Carrie. So it didn't have. It wasn't like I was doing two on my own, so that really helped a lot. But 
but we had a great time up there in, in the Twin Cities. Uh, interesting question here. If if you were a salesperson and you were trying to sell a product, it doesn't have to be SharePoint in any marketplace. Is there a value? I mean, it's kind of a loaded question, a rhetorical question anyway. What's the value of doing this community engagement if you're in sales? Oh, I think it's huge because you're in front of a lot of people and you build a credibility. You know, if, if you go out and give your knowledge away for free, and, and that's the key, you, you, you don't want to expect anything in return. You know, I don't do this, you know, I don't get paid for speaking. I don't get paid for, you know, I, I've got a tiny bit of income that comes in from some ads on my blog, but that's just to cover like the hosting fees. I don't make any money doing this. Um, I just do it because I like to share information. And so if if you're seen as somebody that's not trying to go out and and have an ulterior motive or, you know, trying to make any money or, or something, and if you're seen as a credible um, person just trying to share your knowledge and and just to help to help other people then I think it just it's going to fall in line you know good things are going to happen I mean I'm not going to say that I haven't gotten any perks for you know for my community work um, because I have and so I think things fall in line and so if you're in sales you know I think if they can see you as a credible knowledgeable person then they're going to trust you and I think trust is probably the backbone of a of a good salesperson.